Hello everyone, Irish Warlock here, and welcome back to part 22 of our Final Fantasy 16 Let's Play. Sorry, it's been a while. Uh, if you saw the Spider-Man video that went up recently, you'll know I was just really busy with work and other stuff. But I'm back, and I'm hopefully going to have a more regular scheduled output of content going forward. Or at least very soon, because I'll start a new job after New Year's, and that will hopefully make things just a lot better. But no point talking about the future, let's talk about what has already happened with part 21's recap. So, what happened last time? Well, we went to Twinside with the hopes of destroying the Mother Crystal. We were planning on causing like a little bit of a distraction. But then Dion decided to have a little rebellion and attacked the city. Originally not attacking the citizens, just attacking guards and soldiers. But then went off and started attacking civilians. We ran into our mother after making our way through the ruined city that Dion had left behind. Teamed up with Joshua and were able to kind of subdue Dion and destroy the Mother Crystal. We brought Dion back to where our mother was and Dion ended up killing Olivier. But it looks like Olivier is actually ultimate in disguise, so it doesn't really matter. In a flashback, we saw that Dion had killed his father and he was actually under Olivier's mind control the whole time. Or at least the whole time he was destroying the city. Now we are back at the hideaway and ultimate is off. Messing with the head of the King of Willowed, I think is the only way to describe it. Just go back and watch that scene, because my god is it weird. Dion and Joshua are both here resting, and we're going to talk to Otto. Otto, how far is the realm? The realm? Oh, oh yeah, and the skies are really messed up as at the moment. As look past the fat storms out mother crystals, and their skies are a roiling cesspit. And Gav? He's with your uncle in the Free Cities, helping Mid with her project. Send an owl there. Oh, the Enterprise. Things turn foul. Still waiting on a reply, though. Do you have any good news? <laughs> well, that depends on your definition of good. All right, fine. What do you suggest we do? Oh, no, oh, I'm just a messenger. I'll leave the scheme into those more suited to the task. Could be that Lady Vivian and Old Tones have their own thoughts on the current state of things. Could be that they don't. It certainly can't hurt to ask. I suppose not. Okay. Yeah, let's start by checking in base and getting a bit of a recap of everything that's happened. Alright, Vivian. How is it that every one of your little excursions presages some inexplicable catastrophe? Not that you are to blame for the Dominion's fate. No one could have predicted the actions of the Crown Prince. I'm sorry I couldn't save your home. My countrymen are stronger than you think. A few toppled clock towers won't break their spirits. They'll be back on their feet in no time. Good. I hope so. Look at us. Bluer than a pair of bog crabs. Tempting though it may be, Sulking will not help us find a solution to this mess. You believe there's one to be found? I don't know. But I am certain we're more likely to find it if we first examine the facts. The blight is definitely getting worse. Look at it. Skies. Fear and confusion reign over Valisthea. Oh, the land around the fallen mother crystals had already begun to wilt for want of ether. But not like this. Crystals that filled wells and fueled furnaces. Now nothing but pretty shards of rock. And those that hang from the people's necks cast nary a glimmer of light to keep the dark at bay. It is only a matter of time before the common folk convince themselves that the end of days is upon us. I mean, maybe it is. Yet I fear a swift end is more than we can hope for. While most of the world thirsts for ether, the remainder drowns in it, spawning a Kashik in droves. And amidst the hordes of mindless beasts, with magics as like to fail as function, even the strongest nation would falter. Rosaria and the Iron Kingdom teeter on the brink of collapse, while the tragedy in Twinside has all but paralyzed the Holy Empire. Dalmechia fares little better. Rumor has it the ministers fled the capital after the fall of Drake's fan. 
leaving their beloved republic to crumble. Walud, meanwhile, moves in earnest. The Einherjar has been sighted off storm. The world, in short, is in chaos. It would seem our civilization was nothing but a castle of sand. To be washed away at the whim of the waves. A castle of sand? Not my best flourish, but it seemed fitting. The reports I've received are considerably more blunt in their appraisal. Without the protection of their nations, it will fall to the people to defend themselves against those who would take what is theirs. Which is only ever going to end one way. Defending a farmhouse against a band of chocobo thieves is one thing. But pitchforks and palisades will do little to stall an army's advance. Should the King of Wulu deign to invade, there would be none to stop him. Okay, so world is falling apart. Akishka are going crazy, and Willowed is still invading despite everything. But that's because Ultimate is convincing their king to do it. So you know, just a normal day for Clive Rosfield. about the skies. No! You don't know, Lawsman. <laughs> it doesn't take a court astrologer to argue the obvious. As for what has disturbed the heavens, that, I believe, is a question the Fallen might be better placed to answer than I. Oh? And on the sixth day, did the gods tear the sun from the firmament, visiting darkness upon their prideful sons and daughters? But I dare say you remember your childhood lessons on the sins of Zemeckis only too well. You think they're connected? But Ultima was one of the gods responsible. Well, he has certainly exhibited powers that we mortals would associate with the divine. There is nothing divine about him. <sighs> but he wouldn't be the first god of whom that could be said, now would he? Yet for all the fairy tales that tell of the sins, there is almost nothing in the way of actual historical accounts. Had I the journal of Moss the Chronicler, I may have been able to tell you more, but alas, I fear all remaining copies have been lost to time. You will forgive me, I hope. Yeah, I suppose. Because there is nothing to forgive. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I was like, dude, five. Perhaps Otto will be more inclined to share his thoughts when he hears what the others had to say. Oh, and Jill's here. Don't we always? That would be a first. It would. Actually, there are three. <laughs> we had as many owls arrive while you were at the shelves. Martha's got a cash account at her gates, and talk of monsters roaming the hills outside of Northridge has put the wind up Isabel and her lot. And don't forget Dallinville. Lubor says the village was raided by bandits. When it rains, it fucking pours. The curse breakers are spread thin, taking stock of the damage in the Dominion. And even if I could get word to all of them, I doubt they'd get here in time to make any real difference. Which means, there's only two people who can. Jill and I. Let them know we're on our way. Right then. I have to go save the world. Uh, yeah, let's start with Martha's Rest.
God, I've missed playing this. Like, it's been three weeks since I last played this, and I've really missed it. But as I said, I was working on another project. It took a little bit too much time, and work was just a bit all over the place. I, any time I had free time, just wasn't enough. Oh, dang. out of the blue and there's no telling when they might be back you best keep that sword handy Sid oh. this man's gonna die if we don't get him to a healer for all our best in case Martha it's good to see you and you Clive Jill Otto said you've been attacked by a Kashik. What exactly happened here? Those skies are what happened. Not long after they fell dark, we had our first visit. There were hundreds of them. Tried to storm the hill. Only a handful made it up here, but that was more than enough. The rest are still down there now. And while we have a few willing fighters holding them back, they're sorely outnumbered. What do you think, Clive? That we join the fight. I thought you'd never offer. Now, where I need you is the Fallen Gate. That's where the fighting is fiercest. Let the men know you've come to help. Something tells me they'll be pleased to see you. We're on our way. You think there were as many as Martha says? More. Barricades we've set up around the town won't hold the Akashic back for long. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, yeah, I want to get rid of this and. Oh, can't do in combat. Alright, Grant, we need to change back to Bahamut after some points. There we go. These men don't have the look of hired swords. Oh, it's the lads. If you've come to rob this place. You are mistaken, my Lord Rosfield. We're here by Madame Martha's leave. How do you know my name? Forgive me, my Lord. There wasn't time for introductions. We're with the Guardians of the Flame. Wadesmen? But how did you come to be here? 
Where is your commander? Sir Wade left earlier with a scouting party to find out where the Akashic were coming from. Did he? Take your wounded back to the inn. Martha will see you're looked after. We'll join you in on. Say soon. Don't use the fancy words. And to think you took them for thieves. A fine reward for holding off the horde, that is. When did Wade and his men arrive? Not long after Rosalys fell. The Guardians asked me to shelter some of them that had lost their homes. They were making ready to leave just as the skies turned, and we agreed it was best we stuck together. Martha! Trouble! The scouting party's almost at the lift, but they got a pack of Akashic snapping at their heels! And they got wounded with them! They're not gonna make it! Damn it all! We'll worry about them, Martha. You look after everyone here. If any can still fight, send them to the lift. I will. You two be safe now. Okay, let's go save Wade. I need you to get those who can still walk up the lift to Martha's. But what about... I didn't ask, Oscar. Sir. Sir Wade. Lord Rossfield. If you aren't a sight for sore eyes. Martha seemed to think you might need some help. And by the looks of it... We thought we could sneak by them. But we didn't know there would be so many. How could we have? You. Oh, hello. Damn it. We need to get the injured to safety. Do you think we can hold them off? We can certainly try. Are you with us, Sir Wade? Always. Then let's do our duty. Let's hit it with the big one. Ow. God damn it. Hit the head, hit the head. There we go. Oh god, there's more. Okay, screw it.
God, to see his tanky. Cheeky heal. Come on. Nearly got him, nearly got him, nearly got him. There we go. Woo. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. And yet again, you've pulled me from the flames. It's just a pity I keep walking into them. <laughs> you've never been one to shy away from danger, Sir Wade. Like any shield worthy of the name. I see you're all in one piece. Martha! Is something wrong? The lookout saw smoke coming from down East Pool Way. Too thick to be a hearth. A second horde. Feel like finishing the job. Always. Jill and I will make for East Pool. You'll need to move the injured without us. Don't you worry about them. The moment my men are safe, I'll follow. Good luck. Wait, which one's East Pool? Oh, yeah, it's where. Uh. What's his name? I forget. His wife used to be. I forget his name from at the start of the game. So I've not played this in so long and the start of the game was even longer. Like I started this obviously before summer or during summer. Like I'm trying to finish it up now before the end of the year. Oh, it's goblins. They're headed for the rest. We have to slow them down. Martha and the others won't be ready. <laughs> oh no, Chocobos, no. I said I would never kill a chocobo in this game. Oh god, it's one of these little freaks. Apologies, my lord. Did I miss anything? Eh, yeah, not much. I take this then.
Okay, let's see if this holds me in place. No, I think he teleported away. Yeah, that was a waste. Just a little bit of overkill. Do you see any more? No. I think that was the last of them. But it won't be long before the next lot arrive. Then we make for Martha's while we can. What did you find out there? The same as Sir Wade. Scores of Akashic. Well, wherever they came from, they're gone now. Our lookouts say the lowlands are clear. Yeah, for now. Hopefully we'll have enough time to lick our wounds. How many of your men were injured? Damn sight less than if you hadn't turned up. Thank you. It was a hard-fought victory. But as long as the skies remain dark, I fear the Akashic's numbers are only going to rise. It's not a matter of if the Horde will be back, but when. And whether that's sooner or later, we'll need to be ready. The inn here affords a good view of the land, and is easily defendable. I'd like to make this one of our outposts. What do you say, Martha? You'd have more men to guard the rest. Well, when you put it like that... Of course they can stay. Guardian Scarf. Oh, okay, it's something to play. Cool. My lord, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oscar, over here. It is an honor to make your acquaintance, Lord Rossfield. I am Oscar. Oscar of House Murdoch. House oh, Murdoch. <laughs> I wasn't aware the Lord Commander had children. Oh, he didn't. But his brother, my father, did. I am Sir Rodney's nephew. Oh. <laughs> well, go on then. It's not for me to ask him. Yes, so wait. If it please you, my Lord Marquis, might you take me as your squire? I would learn the duties of a shield from the finest. Do I need a squire? I'm sorry to disappoint you, Oscar. But I'm a shield no longer. Nor was I ever the finest. And spending time in the company of an outlaw hardly seems a fitting education for one uh, aspiring to take his oaths. My Aunt Hannah once told me that a man is not defined by his title, but what he does in its name. You have accomplished much since taking on the mantle of Sid, winning no little honor in so doing. And I would sooner serve under an honorable outlaw than an unworthy sheep. Not that so Wade and the other guardians are. I mean to say that, uh, the. It's all right. We know what you mean. <laughs> there is only so much the boy can learn from me, my lord. But a squire. Would that really be so bad? You were a squire once. And I'm certain Sir Rodney would approve. No 
know that I'll show you as much leniency as your uncle showed me. I would not have it any other way. I will not let you down, Lord Rossfield. You or my uncle. We shall be staying here for the time being, and not just for the ale. I'll have one of my men escort Oscar to Benamir once he's said his farewells. Okay, cool. All right then, let us go to Northreach and help Isabel. So it was a cash in a cash get in Isabel. Uh, Martha's rest, and they said, "Monsters here." I saw it with my own eyes. There are ghosts in the Royal Meadows, then why isn't the garrison dealing with them? I can't do it. I can't fight those things. The Lord. The lady. We will see the dame's message. There have been sightings of strange creatures, I understand. With the blue eyes. Yes. Like a kashik, but different. They've taken so many. I've lost count. A kashik, but different. <sighs> Alchemist thralls. And what of your mistress? Is she here? Oh, no. She went to the garrison to ask what they were planning on doing about all this. Then we'll look for her there. And the garrison's doing we are at the moment. We could leave. The two soldiers were carrying Oh, looks like they're trying at least. Madame, please! Half the garrison's been slaughtered by those things. We lost the captain this very morning. We've tried requesting reinforcements, but there's been no word from the capital or the Dominion in days. What more would you have us do? I would have you do your duty. Those at the Vale look to me for protection. And protect them I shall. Because they are my charges, and that is my duty. In case you have forgotten, the people of this town are your charges. But more than that, they are your people. Your sisters, your brothers, your lovers. So you have a choice. Lay down your sword and watch as they are slaughtered. Or take it up and do what is right. She speaks the truth, you know. This here. It's all we have. It's all that's left. What we have left is our lives. Do you really want us to lose them as well? Not if we don't have to. Look, there's a cask under the captain's bunk. Let's talk about this over a drink, eh? I'm listening. I'll have a word with them. I didn't expect help to arrive so quickly, and thought to take matters into my own hands. It was a noble effort, but I thought you might still need some support. I'd like you to consider my needs. Um, <clears throat> what we need to consider is where the creatures <laughs> came from. The way the survivors speak of them, one would think they appeared out of thin air. Because <laughs> they probably did. Perhaps they did. It's hard to know what to believe these days. We'll talk to the survivors. You're a pikeman, yes? What happened? I've got family in war. I heard the flood was spreading, so I went to see if they were all right. And the fact that them glowing things found me in the meadow. I ran for my life. 
never did get to the village. Leave that to us. But my family... They're still in the capital. I'm sorry, darling. I truly am. That thing... It took off the captain's head. Did you see the creatures that attacked you? Creatures? Uh, yeah, I... Uh, they came out of nowhere. They went for Josie first, then me, and then... Then they were just... gone. Do you remember where you were? On the road from Oriflam. We just passed Moor when... When... Where's my Joseph? It's all right. Just rest now. At least we have an idea of where the thralls might be now. We should head for more. It's more that little village that hated me just because I was branded. I think it is. But what we need to do is... Uh, yeah, let's get rid of Garuda. And put in Bahamut. And... to find out what we're facing. Okay, let's get moving. It was all they could do to escape. Oh, sugar, that was an accident. I don't know what I'm doing with this. Hang on, hang on I gotta check that because I don't have any clue what that does. Okay. Well, that one was fun. Okay, not really sure what any of that actually did, but all right.
Come on, come on, come on. Come on, burn. There we go. more but i'd say we've done what we can for the time being then we should let isabel know you have the town's thanks don't thank us yet. There will be more. Many more. And you'll need to be ready for them. Oh, we shall. Isn't that right, Captain? Yes, milady. The garrison will be ready. Philippe here has convinced most of the men to remain at their posts. For now, at least. <laughs> Hearing that the Dane would look kindly on any man who committed himself to the task certainly didn't hurt. It's not the most selfless of motives, I'll admit, but whatever it takes, eh? Now, me, I never needed convincing. I became a soldier to protect the people I love. And the people I love include the ones standing before me. <laughs> Handsome and chivalrous. Now, if you don't mind, I have sentries to post. Milady. Lest you wonder, I'm not foolish enough to believe that this has solved all of my problems. But it has solved one, and that's one fewer than I had this morning. Thank you again, Clive. Philippe will make a good captain. He reminds me a little of you, Clive, but without all the mocks and moes. Right then, well, off to the Dalla Mill. Oh, he looks just as bad as everywhere else. Poor bastard. Couldn't run because of the weight of his load. Still, better a branded than one of us. Oh. Yeah, doesn't matter. World's on the part and people are still dicks. Dead. Your new companion appears much more formidable than your uncle. Should I be worried? Uh, you haven't been introduced. Jill, Clive has told me much about you. All lies, I'm sure. Your stolas said that Dalamil has a bandit problem. Indeed. Although, you're a little late. They left with our food and gill days ago. Any idea where they went? The desert's a big place. Your guess is as good as mine. But the fact is, I have more immediate concerns. What did you say to me? What did you say? Ah, as if by magic. Let's just say we've yet to reach a consensus about how to solve Dalimil's little problem. And at this rate, it won't be the actions of the bandits which prove to be our undoing. It will be our own. Now, I've tried reasoning with the dissenting parties, but even the desert hare has limits. Perhaps we could talk to them. What makes you think they'll listen to us? What makes you think they won't? Hmm. She makes a fair point, Sid. And you won't have wasted much of your precious time if you fail. They're just across the courtyard. Suppose we just follow the shouting.
You wouldn't talk like that if it had been your men whose throats were slit. Blood for blood, it's the only way. We hire mercenaries and have them mount the bandits' heads on our walls as a lesson to the rest. And what happens when those mercenaries are slaughtered like your men? Are you going to hire more? We're better off using that coin to buy food and supplies. If we hire mercenaries, the only thing we're buying is the bandit's ire. And you cannot fill empty bellies with that. Do you hear me? But what happens when they come back? Maybe it'll be your throat that's slit. That's enough. Both of you. Any more of this and I'll throw you out myself. Come back when you're ready to talk like adults. What's he doing here? Do I know Victor? That's so many people. <laughs> Sid and Lady Jill. What brings you here? I was about to ask you the same thing. Kostnis is in chaos, and the markets have all but ceased to operate. The Briars Kiss here in Dalamil. ...is the only place I can reliably obtain supplies. I was here to do just that... ...when Master Lubor told me of his troubles. He thought I might be able to talk some sense into these fools. But if you're here... ...I suppose his patience must be waning. Who are those people? Those were the thorns in Lubor's side. And the reason this place might be headed the same way as Kostnis. These are cursed skies. The darkness is enough to drive a man to madness. Or an entire city, for that matter. We're still working on the skies. But in the meantime, perhaps we can find a solution to Dalamil's problems. I hope so. For all our sakes. So, you see my predicament? What I saw was a room full of people who were angry and afraid. And with good reason by the sound of it. But if left to smolder, that anger and fear could set the entire town alight. My thoughts exactly. Ugh, what to do? Both sides wish to protect their homes and livelihoods, if only they could agree on how. But as long as they are divided, we are vulnerable. And if there's one thing bandits like, it's an easy target. What would Sid the Outlaw suggest? Kill the bandits. Well, if it were my namesake, he'd let them choose for themselves and be on hand to pick up the pieces when it all went wrong. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Recipe for disaster is precisely what it is. But perhaps that realization would be enough to make them question the ingredients. While it's plain neither Conrad nor Natalie will countenance the other's proposal, it may still be possible to make them doubt their own before presenting them with a third option. And that would be to pool our resources and save the city ourselves. Why fight each other when all their fear and anger can be directed at the bandits? It appears we have a plan of action. Victor, pay Conrad a visit. See if you can't convince him of his folly. I'll speak with Natalie. As you wish. Hmm. Your faces are not well known in this town. That may prove useful. Don't worry, Victor and I will do most of the talking. You need only play along. Play along? What he means to say is yes. <laughs> Alright then, let's get to work.
victory, Conrad. Your own city guard. With you as captain. Me? I, I don't know about that. Ah, here she is. The lady of the spear herself. Conrad, may I introduce you to Jane? Commander of the Red Wings. The oldest mercenary guild in the Free Cities. A pleasure, my lady. The... pleasure is all mine. As I told you, I summoned the commander here from Canberra to inquire about a contract. Victor says you told him no. That there aren't any men left to hire. Is that true? True as the crystals cracked. Nobles came and claimed every last one worth his salt. And not just from us Red Wings. You know of the seven high houses. There must be two score swords assigned each one. Granted, we have a few boys left. <laughs> if it's boys you're looking for. Well, Conrad, are you saying that Dalam's finest cannot defend this town better than a gaggle of unblooded striplings? That a band of beardless youths could better avenge the deaths of your brave men than you yourselves? Absolutely not. We'll show those bastards who they're dealing with. I can't believe that actually worked. <laughs> yeah. Conrad's not what you call the brightest candle in the crypt. And there's a reason why I had you do the talking and not Sid. Well played, my lady. my pickaxe I would I mean it may still be possible to buy something and we may yet be allowed to keep it yes but ah here he is now Natalie allow me to introduce Lord Underhill of Randalar's prestigious League of Merchants uh, Lord Underhill at your service Underhill I was just telling the good lady of our conversation, my lord, and how you were lamenting the state of the capital stores. Lubor says that not only are the granaries almost empty, but that war and the blight mean this season's harvest won't be enough to fill them for winter. Indeed, certainly that is the case. The nobles in the capital are buying up the city's stocks of barley and wine driving the prices higher than most commoners can afford. It is only a matter of time before the peasants revolt. <clears throat> it is worse than I thought. If what Lord Underhill says is true, I fear we have little hope of supplementing our stores, meager though they regrettably are. And while I applaud your endeavors to dissuade our more bellicose citizens from seeking vengeance, I sense Conrad is not wrong in his assessment of the bandit's likely return. Which means that now, more than ever, we will need to secure what little we still have. Food, weapons, herbs, everything. If our humble town is to endure not only this hardship, but those that are certain to follow, we must stand united. All right. If it will help to protect my home, I'll do it. But you needn't have gone through this charade. <laughs> She saw right through it. I didn't say it was good. Merely that it produced the desired effect. Now, my scouts should be returning shortly. Meet me back at the Briar's Kiss, and we shall see what we face. I'm not convinced our roles in this ruse were entirely necessary. <laughs> I don't know. Conrad seemed quite taken with you. Mummy. Good news. 
said. Both Conrad and Natalie have somewhat gracefully accepted their new roles. With time, they may even learn to. Time no longer appears to be the luxury it was before lunch. I take it your scouts found the bandits. Technically, it would be the bandits who found my scouts. It appears they march for Dalamil as we speak. All of them. You're not serious. They don't just want food, they want the whole damn town. I have a favor to ask. I'm told the bandits march in two groups, one from the south and one from the desert, in a move doubtless intended to stretch our already gossamer thin defenses. Very well. Jill and I will meet those from the desert. But what of the rest? The rest, my friend, the city shall fight. Together. The stakes, I concede, are high. But if this does not unite Dalamil, nothing will. That is a lot of faith to put into those who had their hands around each other's throats but a moment ago. Then it will be for us to see that their hands are kept occupied. And I do mean us. I thought you might say that. We'll hold them off for as long as we can. And we will do the same. Right then, let's kill some bandits. <laughs> no women folk have come to welcome us. I'll take that one. <laughs> have fun. Come on. God, this guy's tanky. Nearly got him. Nearly got him. There we go. The townspeople. Could they have held out? I don't hear any fighting. What do you think? That we should hurry.
Natalie. I owe you an apology. You did well out there. The inn would have been lost had you not held the line. Without you, there would have been no line to hold. You saved us, Conrad. You saved Alamil. We all saved Alamil. Yay! Friendship! Teamwork! Woo! Okay, you should have had a change of heart. I'd say they both have. I take it from your presence that our visitors from the desert won't be joining us either. Pity. The plan worked, Sid. Granted, it only took an army of bloodthirsty bandits at our gate. Come now, Victor. Why quibble over the details? We are united, and that is all that matters. As for you, Sid, you fight considerably better than you act. I'll take that as a compliment. Supposed to go back home now. Things under control. For now, at least. Let's go and put Otto's mind to rest. Hang on, let's just get. Welcome to the patron's whisper. Your benefactors are a generous lot. You earned this. Best of luck out there, Sid. Clive. Here you go. All right, and no side quests. I do have some monsters to hunt. Now let's just look at the board, see how many. Three. Okay, I'll, I'll find time to do those. Was wondering when you turn up. Had hours from all our friends thanking you for your timely intervention. How is it you always manage to arrive at just the right moment? Luck, I suppose. Any word on the rest of the realm? Hmm, let's see. Storm's still crying out for Mother Crystals. The nations are still in chaos. And the skies are still the color of a kick in the kidneys two days on. So... Right. Clive, we knew this was gonna happen. Well, not the bleeding skies part. But you take my point. Now's not the time to second guess yourself. Now's the time to visit the infirmary. Taya says your brother's awake. Thank you, Otto. So it was not Sylvester, but Olivier who served as Ultima's puppet. And when Dion learned of this, he sought to slay the fiend. Only for his father to take the spear that would have freed him. Enough to drive a man to madness. Small wonder he hasn't stirred. I would be afraid to wake. Had I but reached out to him sooner, warned him of the threat Ultima posed. But now, both an empire and her prince lie broken. Joshua. What do you know of Ultima? Very little, I'm afraid. Despite my best efforts. Eighteen years ago, as I lay buried beneath the rubble of Phoenix Gate, it was not death who came for me. 
but a lover. And it was while in my rescuer's care I first heard of Ultima. I've been chasing his shadow ever since. Ultima is driven by some deep, dark purpose, and for whatever reason, it would seem you are crucial to his designs. He will stop at nothing to have you, even if that means toppling an empire. But why me? What possible use could I be to such a creature? That is one of many answers that have eluded me. Yet, I am certain of this. It is not mere chance. You were chosen for a reason. All dominants carry within them the might of an icon. Nigh limitless power that is at once acutely limited. I wield fire, and only fire. And I only ice. Eight wardens for eight elements. But you... Clive. You are different. You are special. Your abilities begin with the flames of Ifrit. But they do not end there. The fact Ifrit can even exist goes against everything we thought we knew of dominance. Perhaps Ultima has been waiting for one such as you, whose potential is truly limitless. I've encountered that thing several times now. If it or he, as you say, needs me, why hasn't he claimed me as he did the boy? Were I to hazard a guess, I'd say the two of you are somehow incompatible. His mind not properly attuned to your body. His mind? Mind, awareness, spirit, call it what you wish. But I believe Ultima to be an embodiment of the concept. It is why I struggle and fail to contain him here inside me. Sorry. Inside you. With every setting sun, I feel my strength wane. And though the Phoenix's flames mend the prison I have made for Ultima, they do so at a cost. We must find the means to bring an end to him before I meet my own. What were you thinking? It was that or let him take Clive. And I've always had a soft spot for my brother. But that doesn't mean you should sacrifice yourself to save me. <coughs> Clive, it's Gav. There's an army of Akashic at the gates of Canva. Oh, brilliant. Have to save the Enterprise. The hell with everything else. Well, what's the short of it? Uh, it's all Tyre told you. The capital of the free cities is under siege by an army of monstrosities. The city guard are doing their best to stem the tide, but numbers ain't on their side. What of Lord Byron and Mid? Were they able to escape? No, but they're all right for now. They're hiding with Gav at midship. We have to get them out of there. Mm. And we shall. Otto, prepare a stolas. Tell Gav to stay exactly where he is. Understood. Vivian, what's the swiftest route to the free cities? <laughs> that sounds like a question for the map. Look here. This road, through Tabor, should provide the least trouble. Good. What a coincidence. Tabor is exactly where I'm bound. Joshua, bed is where you should be bound. You don't think I told him the exact same thing? Were Taya not such a talented healer, I would surely have been inclined to agree. But thanks to her ministrations, I feel I may safely rejoin my attendant, who was to wait for me in Tabor if we became separated. Oh yeah, I wondered what happened to her. All right, we travel together. Clive. If he stays close to me, he'll be fine. Thank you. My 
attendant was with me in the Dominion before I primed. She would have watched the battle unfold and witnessed its outcome. I trust you'll be waiting for me in Tabor, where I can finally introduce you. You know how I feel about this, but your brother's stubbornness knows no bounds. I'm starting to think it runs in the family. Alright, so we're to head to Tabor, which is over there. Can't go anywhere else, but we do have a few side missions to start here, so probably can't finish them, but at least we'll start them, and then we'll head to Tabor. you can help me solve a mystery I can certainly try who's gone missing this time it's not who but what mid scales the ones she made for her workshop I borrowed them to teach the little ones about weight and shortly after the lesson well they vanished my first thought was that they'd taken them off somewhere to play but when I asked they swore they had nothing to do with their having disappeared which almost certainly means they had everything to do with it <laughs> Perhaps a visit from Sid will jog their memories. <laughs> I think it just might. Thank you. I don't like to imagine that my pupils would lie to me. But if they have, I'll have no choice but to discipline them accordingly. They were in the atrium when I last saw them. As always. Well, we'll start to you soon, and we'll head up to the atrium. Oh, blasted! Here, you put me in this situation, Clive. You can bloody well get me out of it. I need a hand with a recipe. Oh, not another weird ass sure recipe. You're looking for. I'm not much of a cook. I'm all the cook will be needing. Thank you very much. What I want from you is a little of your time, right? Oh, and uh, perhaps your sword. You remember Ivan Stew, right? Well, despite the look of the thing. And that awful stench, people wolf it down. So I thought I'd try making one of these supposed masterpieces myself. Had a peek at the book and gave it a go, but, well. It wasn't as straightforward as you'd hoped. Ivan had the same problem. Yeah, but this is my blooming kitchen, and I will not be outdone. So if you don't want to be seen as playing favorites, I suggest you lend me a hand. I've never been one to play favorites, Molly. And I would be only too happy to lend you a hand. So, what's on the menu this time? A fried mortress of skyworm. That's one heck of a name, innit? Recipe seemed easy enough to an old hand like myself. Thought I'd followed it to a tea. Only, turns out skyworm livers and drake's mint are not what I thought they were. At least I hope they're not, given the rancid mess they made. Ivan said the recipes in the culinary pilgrimage date back centuries. Who's to say the ingredients even exist anymore? Well, wow. that's a question for a scholar, wouldn't you say? Perhaps you know of one? Kindly old fella who haunts the shelves, maybe? Fine. I'll go and speak to Harpocrates. Perhaps he'll know something. And if he does, I'll see if I can find your ingredients for you. You do that. Lest we forget, you've got a reputation to uphold. You not have just gone and talked to him yourself? Like he's literally right there. Seems the hideaway's lost its appetite. There's a storm coming, Sid. Norseman Harpocrates. I've come to pick your brain if you don't mind. It's about the book you lent Ivan. Ah, Valicia, a culinary pilgrimage, a classic. One of my favorites, in fact. The young man did a wonderful job with the Chancellor's stew. I do hope we shall be able to sample more such marvels in due course. That's actually why I'm here. I don't suppose you know where I might find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. Ah, 
So the fabled sandbriquois delicacy is next on the menu. Delightful. The descriptions of fried mortress never fail to make my mouth water. Now, Skyworm is a somewhat antiquated name for the wyvern, their ground livers being the paste from which the mortress is made. Dragon livers? Yes, how very sambriquois. One would have thought the disciples of Bahamut would have a touch more reverence for their icon's brethren, but apparently not. I believe the specific dragon the recipe demands is the blueback wyvern, said to be the very color of the sea beside which it resides. So we know where to look for our liver. But what about the drake's mint? Saint's bonnet, in contemporary parlance. A herb which grows along the North Reach coast. I gather that one can locate the cheerful yellow flowers by their heady scent alone. So I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding them. I may add that people once believed game was best served with the flora that sustained it in life. In which regard, fried mortress of Skyworm is undoubtedly a typical dish of the time. Meaning that if I find one, I find the other. To Northreach, then. Best of luck, Clive. And do save me a bite once the dish is complete. Right, so we're not going to be able to do that one for a while, or at least we get the next part of the main mission done. But we'll finish up the ones we have here anyway. Oh, and it's Goots who wants to talk to us. Hello, Goots. What am I going to do? Is everything all right, Goots? You seem more discomposed than usual. I don't know what that means, but, but I'm in a bit of a muddle. <laughs> Nan might be in trouble, and she's... <laughs> it's all right. You can tell me. <sighs> there was a trader came by. One of our usuals, like... Said he'd heard some rotten rumours about her down Dallymill Way. Folk are saying she's been selling to bandits and cutthroats and that. I mean, she's fond of a chance to make a coin or two, aye, but, but she'd never do business with baddies. Especially not the kind who go hurting people who haven't done out. I wanted to ask her about it myself, but well, I'm scared she'll give us a tongue lashing. I mean, I'm scared she'd, she'd give me a tongue lashing. She'd never give your tongue a lashing, though, would she? Don't worry. I'll speak to her. Oh, thanks, Clive. You'll let me know what she says, won't you? Of course. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. All right, Karen. Lady Karen. How's business? Not nearly <laughs> as foul as the weather. You're doing good trade, then? Both in and out of the hideaway? Hmm. Can't complain. Wait. What exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care, but here you are today raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. Just asking. Out of interest. All right. I'm here because I was told that certain rumors have been circulating about you selling weapons to brigands. <laughs> Are you? And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? I. I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Look, I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be there were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that. 
if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. You're right, Lady Karen. I apologize. It was wrong of me to doubt you. No, it was. No. I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do-gooding finger at a poor old woman. Of course. Good day. Well, I still need to buy potions. It'd better all be here. Rubbing me blind, you know. It'd better all be here. I think that's everything yet. I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? That the rumors were unfounded. And that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth. Along with some other things that made her feelings clear. That while it sounds like she may have done things she regretted in her past, she says those days are behind her. Oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. But why would people say she was? What did she ever do to them? It's not right. No, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dalimil. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me, you'll see. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen Hill. Oh, right. That's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clive? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it is. Right, so well, that one's on hold for a little while as well. I heard the Emperor was impaled on his head. We're all gonna die! What do you reckon we should do? I say we should just tell Miss Shirley. You'll get us all straight. I'm telling you, I can fix them. Sid! Out of your studies, I see. What is that? It's not a set of scales, is it? No. It was. Of course it isn't. Well, not anymore, it's not. Oh. <laughs> so hasn't it been one? We're sorry. But we didn't break them. We just dis dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. Miss Mididol? And why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. Miss Mididol said. The best way I see how some it works is to take it apart and put it back together again. Well then, your work is already half done. Carry on. Uh, about that. The taking apart was easy enough, but it's the putting back we can't work out. Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. Then. Then. Um. You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these parts with fresh eyes, shall we? All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces. The body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? This is called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> like a chocobo wing! 
You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you teach me to ride one one day? I'll think about it. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. You're on the right track. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchen to fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. But what if I wanted to weigh goots? I don't think you'd fit on that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted. Which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel, or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. Miss Minidol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. She puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved when I tried weighing an apple. And then somebody ate it. Not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. We know what part's supposed to move and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see? It's not so difficult. So, now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. Or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pans by the chains. Very good. Let's see if that works. Ah, all finished. Yes, we did it. Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. That's right. We're Miss Mididol's hairs. Her hairs? Yeah, hairs for the future. She's showing us her secrets now, so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are we almost ready? With a little more help from Miss Mididol and Miss Shirley, I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long. Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. never used the cogwheel. You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you? All right then, back to the shelves. Not a great little side quest, but you know, it's only a little one, only like two or three minutes, so it's not a big deal. Where's my squire anyway? Where'd he go? No, not him. Not him. No, maybe he hasn't arrived yet. Did you see that? Tell me you saw that. See the sun again? There's a storm coming, Sid. Will there be thunder? Well, did you solve the mystery? It was as you thought. The children had the scales, or the parts of them at least. They dismantled them to see how they worked. Oh, no, Mid will have my head. 
Thankfully, she won't. This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. I'm so sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She's even calling them her heirs. She'd have them follow in her footsteps. And her father's. I see. Sid, do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies have been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. To anyone else it would be an opportunity, but to Mid, who lost both her parents to war, it was a bitter pill. One she was none too keen to swallow. But that should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her heirs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, uh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful. Right then, well, that's that done and dusted. So we've got two side missions. One in Dalamil and one in North Beach. And we have to head to Tarbor for the main mission. But, yeah, we can only head here. We cannot head off on this. Oop, cannot head off on the side missions. So then, I think this seems like the best place to end it, because usually when the rest of the world gets locked off and you have to do main missions only, it gets a bit story heavy, and it might be a good time just to take a bit of a pause and just hit the ground running with the next part. I'll try and get the next part out in not too long. If you've liked this video, do give it a like and a comment. It is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to check me out on Twitter and on Medium, and of course, you can subscribe to the channel so you're up to date on all content. And I shall see you all next time.